This here is a viewer's graphics card. And the reason we're making a video about it is because we have no idea if it works. And if it does, it definitely needs to be cleaned. For that matter, I don't even know what kind of card it is, actually. Uh, it's a 7770. So several generations old. And uh, again, just by looking at the shroud, you can tell that it, uh, it's definitely not a modern car. They don't really make too many cards like these anymore, which is kind of a shame. It does have a supplemental six pin and it's uh, actually oriented kind of off to the side of the card, which I happen to like, especially for these smaller uh, graphics cards here. It has a single fan in its shroud and the port selection at the rear is, well, lackluster in 2022, I'll say that. This thing only has a single fan. It doesn't have a back plate and overall it feels fairly light. The heat sink underneath is quite small. You don't need anything beefy for a 7770. So there are a few things in this video we definitely need to do and there's a certain order to this that's gonna make sense first off we need to make sure that this card even works and if it does not is it fixable assuming that it's either fixable or already working we'll then take it apart clean it and then we'll test it because why not let's see what a 7770 can do several years into the future everyone's desperate for graphics cards right now and uh, maybe going for something this old could work or maybe it doesn't make any sense at all because it's too weak who knows, we're gonna find out. Stay with me. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. These meals are actually really good. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of surprised by this. And the fact that these are never frozen just means the flavors pop even more. So here's how it works. You set up a plan ranging from four to 18 meals per week, select between 27 plus options along with 33 plus add-ons. Yep, there's a lot there. And select any dietary restrictions you'd like included, say keto or vegan or calorie smart. You can amp up your meals with add-ons like these smoothies and boom, you've got a super healthy meal plan that'll keep you out of the grocery store. It's all delivered fresh to your door, again, never frozen. And in terms of meal prep, all you really need to do is toss it in the oven or microwave for a few minutes. So I tend to be a bit of a recluse. I don't like going outside very often. I don't like shopping for things, being around other people, especially in this day and age. It's just, yeah, I, staying out of the grocery store is a win for me. And heck, even my wife finds it difficult with our two kids, a newborn and a toddler, which can be a nightmare in a grocery store. So these meals from Factor not only taste great, but they also save us plenty of time each week because we no longer need to shop for too much food. So be sure to head to go.factor75.com forward slash Salazar120 and use our offer code Salazar120 to get $120 off. Again, that's go.factor75.com forward slash Salazar120 and use that same offer code Salazar120 to save big time on your next meal plan with Factor. So to get us started here, I wanna run over some brief specifications of this 7770. I realize that some of you, in fact, many of you may have never gamed with a card like this or a card this old. You may have never even heard of a 7770. So here we go. First up, this is from the Cape Verde GPU architecture, GCN 1.0. Uh, it was manufactured, the, the GPU specifically was manufactured by TSMC. Uh, the node is 28 nanometers and there are 1.5 billion transistors packed into it. This this is a PCI Express 3.0 card utilizing a full 16 lanes here. It is technically DX12 capable, but it, it really should be used for up to DX11 titles. Uh, and get this, a launch price was roughly 150 US dollars. Now a few interesting facts about this particular card. This one seems to have never been opened in its 10 or so years of life. You can see that there's still uh, the warranty void sticker from MSI. It doesn't look like it's ever been removed. And as a result, it doesn't look like this card's ever been taken apart, re pasted. Can you imagine what 10 year old thermal paste looks like? We're gonna find out in this video. Now I should disclose the previous owner of this card actually just kind of outright randomly gave it to me. Uh, he threw it in with a system that I was supposed to fix for him. We ended up fixing the build, but this card came out of that rig and he was kind of just part swapping and things. Didn't really know if this card worked or not. I'm assuming it will just based on the story that he told me, which is why I'm willing to make a full-fledged video about this. If we end up not being able to fix it, I guess this will just be one big flop, but you'll get to see it on camera. Um, I, I'm hoping that we can revive this if it, if it is revivable, if it does need to be fixed to some extent. And then again, we'll take it apart and clean it. We'll repaste it, try to give this thing new life. And then what I'll do, since I guess I technically own it now, uh, is I'll give it away to somebody who will actually make good use of this card. This is a bit too old, frankly, a bit too weak for, for me. I would never really use it. It would 
would just sit in the closet and collect dust. So I'd rather give this to someone who would make proper good use of it. Now, this build here is actually NZXT's foundation pre-built PC that we have uh, uh, shown in the past. We've actually run a few ads for this build here. It's a great entry level system if you wanna get into gaming and not break the bank, especially in this market where graphics cards are extremely expensive. This build just has an APU in it. I think it's a Ryzen 5 5600G. It might be the 5700G, uh, but either way, I think that those APUs are really nice, really uh, good value, especially again in this market. So I just wanna show you guys that this thing works, that it has no issues, and that it posts, uh, because what we're gonna do after this is just connect this 7770 straight into the motherboard and then run off of the discrete cards HDMI uh, port. Uh, right now we've plugged things directly into the motherboard and we should be should be getting a post. Did I plug everything in correctly? Oh, okay. Uh, connect to power. That would make that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> That's probably why we didn't get a pay. There we go. Okay, cool. So you can see the system works uh, without a card in here because again we're running off of the APU. Uh, so now we're going to power the system back off and all I'm going to do is connect the card. We also need to connect discrete power to this uh, PCI supplemental power, just one six pin. So in she goes, clip it in and then power here. Alrighty then. I'm going to remove HDMI from the motherboard and connect it to the card. And by the way, the card's not bolted to the case. So there's really no point. Uh, we're gonna power it back on and let's see if we get picture out through this card. I have no idea if we will or not, but I'm hoping we do. Ooh. Uh, ooh, yes, <gasps> look at that. Look at that. Now I notice the fan isn't spinning. That's a bit concerning. <laughs> yeah, the fan should definitely be spinning by this point. Uh, that's weird, is it plugged in? I can't really tell. Uh, yeah, fan is connected. It just doesn't want to spin. Yeah, that's really weird. I mean, maybe it'll kick on. It keeps scanning drives. That's really strange. Oh, it's artifacting a bit. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So this might not be as good a situation as I initially thought. So anytime you see discolorations like this on the screen, maybe there's just like a, a, an area of the picture that's like completely black or it's green or blue or some color that you obviously know it shouldn't be. You can see a few lines here like that with this particular video out. Um, that could be one of a few things. I have seen where monitors do this themselves. Uh, I know this monitor works just fine though. You guys saw previously when we booted through the APU, everything looked fine. Uh, this could also be the result of a bad cable. A display cable could be HDMI, DVI, display port, get the idea. Uh, or more than likely, it could be the graphics card itself. Maybe the GPU is overheating. Maybe there's some issue with memory. Uh, more often than not, this I find is unfixable, at least with conventional tooling. Uh, you might have to send this in to get it reballed, let's say, if it's the issue with the GPU, you may have to actually replace the GPU itself, which at this point for a card this old, it's just not gonna be feasible. Now that said, we might still be able to use this card despite these weird bands of discoloration. It really just depends on how this card holds up to our stress test. At this point, part of this might be because the fan isn't turning, so maybe the GPU is getting too hot, who knows? Although I think by this point, if it was idling and overheating, the whole thing would have just shut down. And yeah, this fan looks to be completely cooked. It is not turning at all. And by this point, it definitely should be because the card is hot. Actually, the system looks like it just reset itself and I think it's because the card is overheating. So I'm gonna turn the thing off just to save it. See, it looks like it's starting up and then it shuts down. Yep, oof. Okay, so uh, I actually kind of just rigged a fan directly in front of the card or the shroud rather, uh, so that the card could get some airflow. I wanted to boot into the system and see what was actually happening to temperatures while the card was at idle. And uh, it just boot loops now. Yeah, it doesn't even throw us into the operating system. It's really weird. Um, it was working before, but now we just keep getting thrown into the recovery window. Like it refuses to initialize the boot volume. I don't know. Um, let's try unplugging the card again, running through integrated graphics and seeing if we can get in that way. I I'm assuming we can. It's just kind of weird that the card is causing this here. Now we are getting a solid 12 volts to the fan in the card, so the fan should be receiving power. I think the fan itself is what's bad, possibly bad bearings or 
maybe there's something uh, yeah, just, just broken internally, who knows. But uh, I think that just swapping the fan out would be the easy fix here. And would you look at that, surprise, surprise, with the graphics card removed, everything runs fine. So what the heck? I mean, what we can really do at this point is take it apart, we'll clean it thoroughly, and then hope that that fixes it, although I doubt it will. We can also take the opportunity once everything is disassembled to give the entire PCB a once over, see if there's any obvious issues with any SMDs. Uh, beyond that though, I don't have the tools to fix anything GPU or memory related. So um, that'll be fun. Definitely feels a bit weird being the first person to open this card in literally 10 years, uh, assuming again that this seal wasn't replaced, which I doubt. I think that these are the only four screws actually holding the entire cooler to the PCB. So there's that. It tells you anything about how, uh, yeah, how lightweight this cooler is. What I'm really curious about is the thermal paste. I, I really wonder what that's gonna look like. Wow, it came off super easy. Okay, uh, so yeah, quite a bit of dust. You can see on the PCB itself actually kind of forms into the shape of the heatsink. And this paste looks like it's almost like it's crystallized. I wonder if it's sticky. Uh, it leaves a bit of a residue. I mean, it's not like the worst thing I've ever seen, especially seeing as though it's been on here for roughly 10 years. But uh, yeah, I mean, we could definitely clean this up a bit. So let's do that now. We'll start by cleaning up the dye. I've got some IPA here and Q-tips. Uh, all of my cleaning gear, by the way, you can find in this video's description. We use it for pretty much uh, each one of our PCDC videos, sometimes even fix or flop when it comes to, uh, yeah, just trying to restore old hardware, especially. The IPA really helps pick up this thermal paste, which again, I'm quite surprised that it's in as good a shape as it is. I expected this stuff to be like the most flaky, chalky paste, but uh, again, considering its age, I'm actually thoroughly impressed. It is looking so much better already. You can see again, all this dust kind of surrounding the GPU. We're gonna pick this up as well. I could just take my duster to this, my electric duster, but uh, I'd rather not blow this stuff all around the office. Could take it outside as well. That's what I'd recommend if you wanna use a vacuum or uh, a duster like the one we use. But uh, yeah, I mean, the Q-tip and the IPA usually gets most of this stuff up. And now we can whip out the electric duster. I uh, actually ended up getting a new one because my old one broke. I'm not sure why it wouldn't turn on anymore, but uh, this one's a bit more heavy duty. So hopefully it cleans a bit better. Here we go. Now, there are a few remaining areas of this board that are just kind of smeared. So I'm just cleaning that up with some isopropyl and Q-tips once more. Uh, and then once I'm finished with this, we'll give this board when it's when it's properly cleaned uh, a quick visual inspection. We'll look for any issues with SMDs. Uh, I, I don't wanna probe every single SMD on this board. I just don't think that that's really worth it. Again, given the caliber of this card and, and the value of it, even in this market. But uh, if we do see anything pretty obvious, I will try my best to address it. I'm not sure if I'll have replacement components for board this old. Uh, I don't really have a donor board for a 7770 laying around, but uh, we might be able to find some comparable replacements uh, if they are needed. Uh, looking at it now though, I'm not entirely sure there's anything obvious wrong with this card, which I kind of wasn't hoping for because that means it's likely either a GPU issue or a memory issue, neither of those I can fix in the studio. Now again, paying close attention to uh, areas of this board, I don't see any issues with resistors. There are no blown capacitors that I can see or anything like that. Uh, the board actually looks to be in really good shape. Again, given its age, it doesn't look like it was used and abused, but uh, you know, who knows? There could be something lying under the surface that's preventing this card from functioning properly. Uh, and the reason for that boot loop could be, again, the GPU uh, or one of the memory modules or memory chips, I should say. Uh, you just never really know. So uh, now that this is clean, I'm gonna look at the fan and the shroud, see if we can fix that. And then we'll put this all back together and try to get it to boot. Yeah, you know, these cheap graphics card coolers really remind me of like the old school uh, Intel stock cooler heat sinks. You know, just the aluminum kind of like explosion looking heat sink here. Uh, this is pretty gross. We'll clean this up. The fan itself doesn't seem to have any issues with spinning. I don't hear anything in the bearings, anything grinding. There's no real resistance. See the fan blades spin freely. 
so it, it's possible that there's something wrong with the small little circuit board in here. Uh, there also could be maybe a hair or something that's wrapped around um, the, the blades or, or inside the, uh, the, the fan itself that, that keeps it from spinning. Uh, so that's a possibility as well. I'm going to take the fin out and just give it a quick once over, clean it up on the inside without using IPA because I don't want to toast the, uh, the lubricant in here. I might add some more lube to it as well just to help it spin a bit if it can. And, uh, and then we'll put it all back together. Let's see what we have here. Okay, the shroud, we can just, uh, we'll toss this under some like hot water just to get rid of all the dust and then we'll dry it off. This fan though, uh... Yeah, it's kind of hard to see in there. It's quite dusty, but I've seen much dustier fans than this work perfectly fine. So uh, I don't think that the lack of cleanliness here is the real issue. We'll give the shroud a quick rinse in my kid's sink, because I'm too lazy to go outside and use the hose. But uh, yeah, same idea. By the way, a toothbrush and some soap both come in very handy here. And after giving the fan a quick scrub and dusting, everything was thoroughly dried. The card is now ready to be reassembled. We're obviously gonna have fresh thermal paste this time, which should help with temperatures, assuming again the card can actually function. Now a quick word on thermal paste application for especially like GPUs like these where you've got the exposed die. Uh, you want to add a bit more thermal paste than you would think is necessary for something like this because uh, you really don't want to underestimate and end up not having enough uh, thermal paste to cover the entire die. You'll get some really toasty temperatures there. Your card might throttle. It might not even function uh, when gaming. So uh, it's okay to add a bit more. Yes, some of this will spill over onto the substrate around it, uh, but that's okay so long as the paste you're using is not uh, not thermally conductive. Obviously it's thermally conductive, but not electrically conductive. And there are very few compounds out there that are electrically conductive. Obviously liquid metal usually is. So if you're gonna apply LM, it wouldn't really make sense for a card like this, but especially for beefier cards and you're worried about spillage, what you can do is take some clear nail polish and cover these little SMDs here to prevent any shorts. <laughs> I totally forgot how the heat sink goes into this. Uh, I should have. Uh, I should have taken some notes. I think I'm gonna have to reference footage to get this thing reassembled. I think that might be how it went like that there. I don't know, we'll find out. And with that there, this card should be good to go. Check that out. It looks so much better now. You could almost pass this off as a new card if it wasn't for the weird coloring and stuff. Now there is one remaining variable I haven't fully considered uh, regarding how this card functions. If the, if the board detects that the fan isn't spinning, could that be the reason why we're getting this kind of strange behavior where the car just refuses to uh, boot up fully? That I'm not sure about. I might be able to trick this thing into thinking the fan is working by just kind of tacking on a fan that's not actually like, you know, bolted to this, uh, uh, chassis here to this shroud and then that way the fan will at least show up as spinning the rpm will will register and then yeah maybe then it'll post i don't know that's the only other thing i can think of that i can do here with the limited tooling i have at my disposal will us restoring this card be the cure i don't really think so but uh worth a shot right i mean it's the only thing i can really do at this point so let's connect power and I'm not even gonna run that extra fan because if it's just gonna do the same thing, there's really no point. And then we'll plug the HDMI cable directly into the card. Everything's fully slotted in. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Oh, the fan spun. It spun. I saw it spin. Come on, spin up again, spin up again. Come on. Uh. Is it gonna work? Uh, I don't think it's gonna. Wow. I actually saw the card spin up. That's really cool. But uh, yeah, I think it's just boot looping now. Dang it. We should be getting a picture out and we're not. Another thing I just thought of, display out. So let's try a DVI adapter here. So we'll be coming out of the DVI port instead of the HDMI port, just in case the HDMI port is what's giving us these issues. I highly doubt it. 
but I have this to try, so why not? We'll also try it with a display port cable. A few moments later. Of course, neither of those things worked. So my final attempt at getting this card to work, I have a shroud from a 1660, and I think it has the exact same fan connector that the 7770 uses. Now I'm just gonna wire this into this card and see if, yeah, we can trick it into thinking the fans work. Again, the shroud doesn't actually fit onto this PCB, uh, but I just wanna kinda wire it there and maybe it'll see the fan spin and work. This is, I'm getting desperate. I know this shouldn't classically work, but uh, whatever, again. Final straw. They don't call me Captain Jank Sparrow for nothing. That shroud is just hanging there. Uh, really hoping I don't screw that up because that's gonna be expensive to replace in this market. All right, let's see. Now, according to my measurements with the multimeter, these fans should spin because I know this card functions perfectly fine. So if we're getting power from the board to the fans, which again, we measured with the multimeter, these should work. So. Yes, okay, okay, that's good. Good stuff. Uh, let's see, we got a picture. Come on, I'm, I'm crossing everything I got here. <sighs> nope, same thing. Man, all right, well, at least we know it's not the fans. Meanwhile. Now, it has been another day. I've been really struggling with whether or not I should just continue spending time with this graphics card. There's one big thing that I left out of this video and I wanted to go back and revisit it because I didn't want to be bombarded with a bunch of comments about why I didn't do this or didn't do that. I was trying to think of every possible scenario I could put this card in to try to get it to work. Uh, I didn't try safe mode and the reason why I didn't was because for whatever reason we you know, got into Windows the first time and then after that it just stopped booting essentially into the volume. So I took it upon myself to do that, to, to boot into safe mode, uh, which proved very problematic. Uh, ran into several just really weird artifacts. The screen was glitching. I tried my best to reinstall drivers. Um, I, I'm just not sure if this is like some kind of driver conflict or what that we're looking at here. Uh, but that was my suspicion in the moment. Uh, so ultimately, it, it was so corrupt. I mean, I couldn't even use Windows. It was totally just, it just crapped itself. So I reinstalled Windows 10 outright, uh, got back into the home screen after fiddling with things a bit. I don't, again, I don't know why this graphics card is causing so many issues with Windows, but uh, I finally got a hold of 7700 HD series drivers from AMD. I installed those, and right around the time that the graphics driver specifically was being installed, uh, the PC shut down and restarted itself, and now we've ended up here at this recovery window, which is just essentially one big boot loop. I have tried so many times to get out of this page, no matter what I do, no matter how many times I reset or jump into safe mode, I end up in this screen here, and it's just the most frustrating thing ever. So. Uh, yeah, I, I tried to give it one last big hoorah, but uh, alas, safe mode, driver conflicts, software issues. I mean, this card just just doesn't want to work. And the other thing too that I didn't really think about until now as to why this card might be doing what it's doing, if the fan died and the owner of the card at the time didn't know that the fan died, it's possible that the graphics card overheated. Now, graphics cards are designed at least a lot of the modern ones are designed or should be designed to throttle themselves back if temperatures reach a dangerous level. Uh, if that T-junction is 100 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Celsius, by the time that temperature is reached, uh, either the frequency will have throttled back so hard into oblivion that the card is unusable or the card will force the system to shut down. Now, if for whatever reason that didn't happen or I don't know. I mean, the card was just like baking at 100 degrees C and that was kind of it. And the you know, frequency was throttled back enough to where temperature didn't exceed that. But at the same time, you know, 100 degrees C at constant temperature is no good for really any card out there. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, maybe that is what kind of partially cooked either the memory or the GPU itself. And that's why no matter what I try here, I can't get the card to work. I just, I'm just throwing that out there because that's the only other thing that I noticed that's wrong with a card 
And uh, it is possible to damage a card in this way by simply allowing it to overheat. So uh, who really knows? Just throwing out another option. I, could be the one. That could be the reason why. But it could also not be. Who knows? I don't, I don't know. Again, I, I feel like I've exhausted every possible resource. I don't know. Anyway, back to uh, the conclusion of this video. Dang it. I was really hoping we'd be able to get this thing up and running. And I suppose, in a way, it already kind of did work. I mean, heck, we even got to the Windows load screen or the, the home page in Windows. But uh, I don't know. I think that this card, it, it's definitely finicky. I'm still not entirely sure what's wrong with the fan. And beyond that, I think that uh, it's probably fixable, just not in this environment. I just don't have, again, the tools. So I, I wish I had more news for you. I was really hoping that we could get a little more out of this little guy, but uh, it's just not meant to be right now. And by the way, for those wondering about performance, which was the other thing we were hoping to test in this video, I'll give you a bit of a spoiler. Uh, there are APUs right now that perform as good, if not better, than this 7770. In fact, this card kind of ranks in with like the GTX 550 Ti. Uh, that's probably the higher end, like the upper echelon of this card's performance. The lower end would probably be more like a GTS 450. And those are the cards that a lot of scammers on eBay and elsewhere are kind of like, they're, they're flashing V-Bioses for 1050s and 1050 Ti's onto those things, trying to rebrand them and sell them uh, as things that they're not. We've made videos on them, and uh, I'll have one link below if you're interested. But anyway, long story short, this card kind of performs on par with those, and for what these are selling for on eBay in this market, there aren't many of them out there still, uh, it just doesn't really make sense to spend that extra money on a discrete card like this when you could get similar power or much more power, much more performance out of a comparable APU like the Ryzen 5 5600G or 5700G. Again, those are my new benchmark for weak graphics cards, especially older graphics cards going into 2022. And if they can't keep up with those APUs, I, I can't really recommend them unless you can get these cards for like 20 or 30 bucks. And even then, I think there's still a bit of a stretch that needs to be made to justify them in current builds. With that, if you guys enjoyed this little experiment, let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Leave a comment down below, consider subscribing, and I suppose I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg, thanks for learning with me.